I would like to welcome you all to this, the first day of our virtual MAND refresher training. And I would like to introduce myself. My name is Katja Wagner. For those of you who don't know me, I work in the forest team of the International Institute for Environment and Development, or IID. And IID is a implementing partner of the forest and farm facility. And in this larger team, we are responsible for knowledge management, and we also offer a range of training courses, such as um, market analysis and development, MA and D. So I will be your, your main trainer for these four days. But luckily, I also have um, Isabelle Lecoup and Jacques Lecoup joining me as co-trainers. Um, and uh, Isabelle and Jacques have or of course been the developers and authors of the MAND toolkit. Um, so they're gonna be a fantastic resource for us um, with their many decades of experience implementing MAND. And then we also have my IID colleague, Ellie uh, joining us, who's um, responsible for the, the sort of logistics of the Zoom meeting. And um, of course our interpreters. Um, now, unfortunately, we don't really have time to do a, a whole round of interpretations for all of the participants. Um, so in this case, I would really like to ask you to introduce yourself to the other participants in the chat. Um, so we have staff members from forest and farm producer organizations, and we also have some uh, FFF facilitators joining us as observers. and. Uh, Johnny Zapata, and hopefully also later uh, Sophie Thaus, who are the FFF country coaches. So warm welcome to you all. I'm glad that you could all join us. Um, so I just not, would like to state briefly what the objectives are of, of this training. Um, so we've invited um, staff members from second and third tier forest and farm producer organizations who have already gone through MAND training and have ideally used it either to train field facilitators or as field facilitators themselves. So the objective of this refresher training is for you to be able to fully implement uh, MAND training of MAND facilitators or MAND trainers in your own context. Um, and this training is really uh, also an excellent opportunity for you, you have, who have already used MAND to ask questions that might have come up while, you, while you've worked with MAND and to, to get clarifications on uncertainties you might still have. And you also have this long-term hope that through this training, um, FFPO staff will be able to, to build their capacities to fully institutionalize MAND capacity training within their own organization. So eventually, um, IID does not have to run MAND trainings anymore, and you can do it within your own context. Um, and we have also invited the FFF facilitators because we see that um, they have an important role in, um, in supporting you in implementing uh, MAND. Um, so they need to be aware of the key principles and potential pitfalls uh, in supporting you in this. Um, so the format of this training is going to be very participatory. And we have a very short period of time, but we will try to cover all four MAND phases. Um, we'll go through all of the steps, um, but want to have as much participation as possible. So usually, the way it will work is at each step or in each phase, um, I'm going to call on you to, to recount your experiences in implementing those particular steps or phases. Um, and then we'll also ask the group to, to, to uh, comment or make suggestions, ask questions. Um, so we really want to hear from you as much as possible and have a discussion around each, each step. Um, and then, uh, at the end, I will also put up some slides to sort of sum up the key points um, that we think are important. Um, and then there's going to be plenty of time for you to ask questions uh, throughout, but also at the end of each day, we have set aside some time 
where you have the opportunity to ask for clarifications. Um, so the agenda for today is um, we've already gone through the introductions and um, we are then going to talk about some of the fundamental principles of MAND. We will today also cover the uh, preliminary phase, which is a crucially important phase where background research and planning activities need to happen before MAND is implemented. Um, and then uh, we will talk about phase one and we'll try to cover the whole of phase one, which is um, the phase where the existing situation is assessed by the potential entrepreneurs. Uh, and this is just an overview of the agenda for the coming days. Uh, tomorrow, we will try to cover all three steps of phase two. Um, phase two is, of course, where the potential entrepreneurs carry out the surveys to select products and identify enterprise ideas. On day three, we will cover the first two steps of phase three. Um, and that's phase three is where the entrepreneurs prepare their enterprise development plan. Uh, and then on day four, we will cover the last step of phase three and the whole of phase four, which is where the entrepreneurs are supported during their startup phase of their enterprises. And at the end of day four, we have set aside a, a bigger chunk of time to clarify any remaining um, questions. So um, as you know, we have uh, conducted a very brief training survey pre-training survey to try to understand uh, what the, the constituency is going to be of this training and where you might have had some, some problems, um, what are the, the topics that um, would be worthwhile cover, covering. So I just wanted to here present quickly the outcome of this survey um, or the results. We found that you're quite a heter heterogeneous group. Um, some of you have had lots of MAND training and lots of experience working with it. Um, some of you have been trained more recently. Um, and there are also various degrees to which you have had the chance to participate in MAND training. And in these surveys, you have expressed um, some problems um, in implementing MAND. And I've just put here a quick summary of some of the things that more than one person has mentioned. So uh, we saw that you've mentioned that there was um, sometimes a lack of resources and time in implementing MAND appropriately. You've also mentioned that some entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs might still be lacking confidence um, in, in conducting their activities. You have also mentioned that uh, some entrepreneurs had difficulty obtaining data and information to, to set up their, their enterprise development plans. And uh, you've also mentioned that there might have been some issues in how participants were selected for the training. And you've also sent in some uh, enterprise development plans. Thank you so much for this. Um, we went through them and just wanted to sort of see um, whether there are any small gaps that we might be able to address in the training. And what uh, we've seen is that there might be some calculations um, incomplete and some information missing. So we're going to talk about this when uh, on day three, when we talk about um, the development of enterprise development plans. Okay. Um, so this is just a quick introduction and background. And now I'd like to talk with you about the fundamental principles of MAND. And this is where I would like to ask you, um, uh, sorry, uh, what, um, sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you, why do you think, uh, why, why would, want, would one want to build MAND capacities? What would be the reason to for using MAND or for for uh, developing skills in training for MAND? So I'm just going to stop sharing now, and I would really like us to have a quick conversation around this. Um, so who would like to raise their hand and and tell us why they think we would want to build? Uh, capacities for MAND. And you're welcome to speak in French if that is your preferred language, or in English, we have interpretation. 
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the flow. In fact, we need uh, the MA and D in order for us to develop the entrepreneurship culture uh, within the um, uh, OPP members who are the key stake uh, whole, oh, key actors. So this MA and D will allow them to better know their market and express their needs in terms of funding. Uh, so to develop this uh, uh, line that they have chosen. Thank you. Is there someone else who would like to comment on what Bohangi said or perhaps raise another point on why we might want to develop MA and D capacities? We cannot hear you yet, Geoffrey. You might need to. Good morning. I think it is important because uh, uh, from uh, from where I'm sitting, we look at it as a way of uh, building the sustainability of uh, uh, pharma groups, uh, sustainability in terms of uh, uh, groups raise, raising their own resources, and also being aware of uh, of the many market opportunities that they are operating in. And so that they can also be able to identify these opportunities and, and also uh, come up with, uh, uh, with, with the plans uh, on, on how to really maximize in terms of the, the, the benefits uh, that they want to, 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 to get. But I think overall is a, a way of uh, also helping the pharma groups to, to look at their operations, to look at their activities as a form of business and not just uh, you know, uh, activities uh, per se. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Geoffrey. Yes, I think those are both two really or a few very valid points. So sort of um, installing an entrepreneurial thinking um, in, in, in local groups and producers and to, to recognize the opportunities they have in terms of their position in the market um and uh to create sustainable sustainable enterprises that take account of several aspects um needed to be to be resilient and sustainable in their businesses anyone else who would like to to come in now and and say something on this okay in the which case um i might share my screen again because I do I have prepared a few slides to sort of sum up the um the type of um uh, requirements that M A N D may be appropriate to use in. Um, so I'm just gonna start sharing my screen again. Yeah, so you can see. um yeah you can see wonderful. Oh, yes, Johnny, you've just raised your hand. Please go ahead. Yes, we could see your screen and I wanted to show you something. For us as a uh, forest and farm facility, the MAD is important uh, because we want to uh, strengthen the capacities of the producer organizations to provide uh, these uh, services on, on these businesses to their members. And we believe that the staff of the Umbrella Apex organizations uh, using this MED um, will be strengthening their capacities. So therefore we, we support this training and we hope that the, with this refresher uh, training and the Apex organizations will uh, continue work on working on the MAD. Also, I would want to learn how is the status of the implementation of this MAD because most of them they have already received the, the first round of training. Over. Wonderful, thank you, Johnny. And indeed, this is a point um, that you can see here as a second point on my slide. Um, let me just go through it, and you will see that. Um, uh, many of your points are reflected in what I had noted down. Um, so uh, the goal of market analysis and development of the approach is to assist individuals 
living in rural communities develop enterprises to generate and improve their incomes while ensuring the sustainable management of their natural resources. So this is an important point of the sustainability. So you may find that MAND is a useful approach if you want to help your FFPO members adopt sustainable livelihoods by developing enterprises based on natural resources that are available to them. Or you may want to enable your members to sustainably manage the landscape they operate in by giving them incentives in the form of business profits from their own enterprises to make use of their natural resources in a sustainable manner. And MAND, of course, um, provides a framework that can be adjusted to different contexts and used for different purposes. So it was originally developed um, for tree and forest product based enterprises, but it has been successfully applied also by you um, in other in other contexts um, for agricultural products, livestock initiatives. Um, it has also been applied in fisheries projects, in community-based tourism projects. So it's really flexible in that way. Um, and as Johnny has mentioned, we uh, would also really like to see this long-term vision of ours um, become reality, the vision of um, FFPO members, um, um, FFPOs being able to, to provide their members with business incubation services. Um, and for this, they have to develop their own capacities and capacities of um, FFPO staff employed in such business incubation units to be able to support um, potential entrepreneurs in developing their businesses. Uh, and this is a point that was also raised um, by you. Um, the next one, you may find that FFPO members are able to sell their products, but um, they may be disadvantaged by a middleman they're dealing with or are unable to respond in their production and sales strategies to changes in the market. Um, and the, as the MAND process requires entrepreneurs to reflect on their business environment, conduct their own research and develop their own business and marketing strategies. It really empowers them to develop entrepreneurial thinking. Uh, and this provides them with a strong foundation to become more strategic entrepreneurs who seek out opportunities within their capacities in the value chain and who can adapt their strategies to changes in their production base, their market environment and the whole value chain. And then lastly, and this is also something that you've touched upon, um, as the approach encourages planning and development of business strategies, it also contributes to local communities or local groups' investment preparedness. Um, so making it easier for them to access external capital and investments. Um, the main output or one of the main outputs of the MND process is a clear and logical business plan. Uh, enterprises may find it easier to communicate their financial requirements with this plan um, to financial service providers. Um, so I think I think that was that was a good overview. Um, and I would now like to talk with you about I'm sorry, I'm having trouble finding the right place to click. <laughs> um, I would now like to, like to talk with you about the core principles of MAND. And I'm going to stop sharing now again, because I would like to have a discussion around what you think are the core principles of MAND. Is there anyone who would like to go first? So principle really, in this sense, I mean, what makes it perhaps also different from traditional project approaches? Can you see maybe if there is a difference between the traditional project and beneficiary setup? Yvonne, I can see you have unmuted yourself. Would you like to come in? Yes. May I? Please. Yes. Uh, I think the MAND is very important for us, uh, for training, for FAPO. And uh, through the MAND implementation, I recognize that this is a very um, 
very practical approach for training and first for sustainable uh, livelihood for FAPO if we, we train them and they apply because first they can recognize what's the most potential product of their area. In the first place, when we organize the training and we let the FAPO to discuss, they have many products around them uh, and around the forest and uh, the, the, uh, the farm landscape. But they can discuss and they can choose what is the most potential product from, from their area. I think it's a very good way. And the second, how we talk about sustainability of um, them uh, from their product, they recognize what's the important of uh, corporations, a uh, group work. And they can uh, understand if they work alone, what is the advantage? And if they work together, how they can cooperate with each other and how they can develop their product. And I think it's a very, very easy because in Vietnam, most of forest farmers, they have very small land and small forest. If they did not recognize the cooperation and the group working and co collective action, sometimes they do not believe each other and they cannot cooperate with each other and they can not uh, um, establish the FAPO and manage FAPO well. This is a sustainability of organization also. And the third thing, through the MAND, we can recognize some very uh, important factor. Expect to the business, we have the five factors when we, we uh, have the homework and farmer can can understand what the uh, natural resource effect to their business, what is the economic and market effect to their business, what the uh, illegal or legal and institution yeah, factor and uh, policy, how it affects to their business, and even the social issue also, how they have to work together and uh, provide solidarity and cooperation among community. I think also is effect to their business. And the last one, the technology also, how they have to apply, how they can develop uh, their product and increase uh, the, the, the income through them, not only raw material, and they can improve their product by processing, yes, by bringing this to the market. I think the FAPO can recognize the, uh, the five factor effect to their business very well. And then when they agree to each other, they will develop the, the, the um, business plan. They can uh, write the uh, project, how they can uh, assess to their uh, to the other uh, financial institution to find out the, uh, the capital for business. And I think those uh, issues make them a uh, confident step by step, and then they can develop their product through their uh, homework, through their plan, and through their corporations. I think it's very important. More, some, some, yes, something and some factor talk about the sustainability through the approach through the, the 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 networking through the cooperation and through the improve their business planning yes thank you very much thank you Yvonne yes mm -hmm. some very very good points that you've raised there um in terms of the empowerment and the participation of the entrepreneurs in the whole process and um um, making them really the main actors and understanding their their position and their possibilities um, and identify their strategies as entrepreneurs. Um, a very good point also raised on the five areas um, of sustainability that that impact on a business and that are important to to consider as you develop um, as as you develop your enterprise. Um, and a very interesting point also on the 
the sustainability of the organization and and of, of uh, understanding the the benefits of working together as an, as a group. Um, I think those are really really interesting points. Um, would anyone else like to comment, perhaps, or 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 um, talk about some other principles of MAND that sort of set it apart from from traditional projects, development projects. Stand silence. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I think Yvonne, you've you've really covered a lot. Um, and perhaps if you allow me, um, I just would like to put up a few slides to summarize what I thought would be would be um, the key principles. So let me start sharing my screen again. Need to locate it. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So we've talked about the empowerment principle. So the MND methodology is, is based on participatory principles and empowerment rather than on direct intervention in people's livelihoods. So we therefore speak of entrepreneurs and rather than beneficiaries. So this means that the entrepreneurs know and control all elements of their enterprises rather than being out of control over the assistance they receive um, in traditional development projects. Uh, MAND really enables entrepreneurs to acquire the skills and knowledge necessary to undertake sustainable livelihood development activities that will continue after the training ends and external support has maybe ceased. Um, so entrepreneurs are encouraged to link to service providers who can assist them in um, accessing resources that suit their particular needs rather than receiving grants without many conditions. So a very, very important and key element or principle is the empowerment of the entrepreneurs. Uh, and then, as I've mentioned, there is also, and as you've mentioned, there is a focus on a participatory approach, which goes hand in hand with the empowerment, of course. So um, MAND is participatory involving a wide, a wide variety of flexible tools and the facilitators here play a very crucial role um, because they need to select the tools um, of this really large um, uh, collection of tools available um, according to the needs of the participants and according to the needs of the local context and the available resources. So the facilitator is crucial because he or she needs to know um, the appropriate use of MAND and the different tools and methods and select and fit the tools to the requirements of the communities they work in. But the role of the facilitator is not to provide extension services, but to facilitate a participatory process that aims to develop the capacities of the entrepreneurs to think analyze and act on their own. So the MND facilitators need to attend facilitated training sessions and study the MAND field facilitator guidelines carefully. Um, and the facilitator also needs to match the pace of the MAND process with the capacities of the entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs need time to internalize the information that they require to make the best decisions for their enterprises. Um, I actually have some slides here, so I need to show them also. So this was just a slide on empowerment and participation. And then Yvonne also mentioned the five areas of enterprise development. Um, so the MND process takes into account environmental, social, institutional, and technical factors as well as commercial and financial aspects of the product. And the screening of these five areas of enter 
enterprise development in every phase of the MAND process is essential for creating sustainable businesses. Um, would you perhaps be able to, to, to speak to why, why these different areas are there? And I'm just going to stop sharing. Perhaps no, I, I'll leave that up so we can see. So, what what do we mean by um, social sustainability? Why is that an important an impo important consideration? Yes, please. Um, sorry, in this mode, it's difficult for me to to see who's raised their hand, but I think Tuan. Yes. Yes, hello, Kata. <laughs> Thank you for the suggest me. And um, I think uh, five area of enterprise development very important uh, for for farmer to uh, want to be developed uh, their business uh, because the, this like a screening uh, like a screening can can like a, like a method that can help them. Uh, to uh, to um, uh, to collect information for law five sustainable enterprise, and also can development they can consider uh, very uh, very full very full um, information with full of information uh, before they make decision for their uh, enterprise for their development business, and. Um, and I think five areas uh, not only uh, help them uh, make the right decision, because they can um, uh, them um, they can make a farmer you know, to understand more about their situation, um, and also can uh, find information uh, follow five area uh, to make sure that uh, they will. Um, do not um, lack uh, information about the market. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yes, you thank you. Yes, thank you, Tuan. I think that's a very, very good point that it, that the five areas are important for for finding all the necessary information. The screening on the five areas are are important in finding key information that will impact on the enterprise. And in particular on, on social and cultural sustainability, would anyone have an idea of what, what is meant by that? Why, why is it important for an enterprise to, to ensure social sustainability or what does that mean? Grace, I can see you've unmuted yourself. Please go ahead. Okay. Good morning once again. Yeah, for aspect of social and culture, it is important to be considered in the enterprise because it is the area where the participant and the community in general, they must be comfortable with the product that you want to raise in the market. So, so long as in, with the enterprise development, we aim to have a business that uh, the product can be sold or used by people within the community. So if we, we might develop any business that is not social or culturally acceptable in the area, that business will not work. So whatever we think of any business, we must think who are the first one to benefit from it. I think it's the immediate community. Mm -hmm. So it is important, very important to think or to consider the, the need of the community, how that product, how they view it socially or culturally, is it acceptable or whatever. So this is my thinking. Yes, thank you, Grace. I think that's a really, really good point. Um, you want to you want to make sure that um, if you I mean if you if you develop a product or an enterprise idea. Um, that some of your community members may be opposed to uh, for cultural or social reasons, you will find it difficult to run your enterprise in the long run um, because you're essentially doing it in a hostile environment. So you need to make sure that 
your enterprise idea socially acceptable. Um, are there any other uh, social aspects that you think are important in, in, in the development of your enterprise idea? Oui, moi je pense que euh, le volet social est important au sein même de l'entreprise pour qu'elle soit durable, dans la mesure où l'entreprise doit travailler dans un premier temps pour ses employés. C'est-à-dire que ces employés doivent avoir un niveau de vie acceptable pour pouvoir participer au développement de l'entreprise. Hein? Donc, moi, je pense plutôt le volet social au niveau de l'entreprise. Il faut bien euh, gérer, bien voir euh, les besoins du personnel de l'entreprise pour qu'elle puisse se développer Okay, thank you very much. Yes, that's that's really important also, of course, that the that the those who are engaged in the enterprise are um, um, are treated fairly, I suppose. Um, and this will also come into consideration in your economic uh considerations no um uh perhaps just one more thing that i wanted to point out um in terms of social sustainability um uh i guess one of the one of the most important points also in that regard is that you make sure you need to make sure that your enterprise at the very least does not harm any disadvantaged disadvantaged members of the community um and uh, that it is equitable, as you've said, Wang Yi, um, and also gender balanced. Um, so taking into consideration of the needs of, of women um, participating in the enterprise and their particular um, uh, inequalities that they still face um, in many aspects. Okay, so shall we then perhaps move to um, Legal sustainability. What what do we mean by that? What what do you think? Why do you think is it important to consider legal aspects to make an enterprise sustainable? Please, Theodora. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, it's very important to consider the uh, the legal area because um, any enterprise exists based on the legal arrangements that the country has. So, for example, the operations, uh, you need to abide to some uh, laws and policies. Like if you have an enterprise maybe dealing with the uh, production of uh, 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 a food product, so you will have to get to, to, to abide to the standards and those standards are well stipulated in the, in the, in the legal framework. But also uh, if you come, for example, to Tanzania, our experience is you will have to abide from the district uh, um, uh, arrangements that they have, like it fits uh, an enterprise, you need to have a certificate, but also uh, you need to have certificates of uh, of uh, certain entities that your products are aligned into. So it's very necessary uh, if you want to operate because it's give, it, it gives you the legal identity, but also it allows you to to, to do uh, business. And if you want maybe to do some imports, you want to do exports, you will need to have that legal identity within your enterprise. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, that's a very good point. So um, MAND really ensures that the entrepreneurs stay abreast of changing laws and policies that may influence all aspects of their enterprise. So harvest, processing, transportation, the distribution of products, as well as, as you said, the registration, but also financing of the operations of the enterprise. Okay, um, shall we move to market sustainability? Um, 
what what do we mean by that why what what does that mean why is this important for 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 an enterprise to be sustainable to consider the market the market area so MAND contributes to enterprise sustainability by ensuring access to market information um, and um, staying abreast of any changing policies that influence product distribution, for example. Um, so this process really helps the entrepreneurs to remain competitive by assessing the changes in market environments and adapting their products so that they remain attractive to the targeted customers. Um, okay. Um, yes, Nila, please. In case of uh, market accessibility, if we want to sustain in uh, entrepreneurship, we must know the demand of the market and uh, we need to or we can compete with the other products in the market until we know our production uh, and our competition in the market, we cannot sustain there to the last. And another thing is that we need to know the, all the process that our production is uh, not only enough for our uh, enterprise, we need to go to the market and fulfill the demand. And the third one is this, how to reach up to market, the entire process helps us to sustain our business and uh, entrepreneurship does not meet only the production, it also um, makes us uh, wide and uh, sustain till the last time to uh, reach to the market. And another thing is that uh, up to the market and it's uh, uh, what uh, production and it's uh, verification of the products will help us to um, make the uh, bettering and the modification of the production will help, help us. So, uh, market accessibility is the major part after production, I think, in case of uh, entrepreneurship. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Sorry, did you want to say something? Sorry, I interrupted you. But I, yes, I think we got your point, and that's, that's a very good point and reiterates also um, what I just said. Um, I would now like to move to... Uh, resource sustainability. Um, would anyone want to um, tell us why it is important to consider your um, resources um, in terms of natural resources? Um, Nila, do you still want to come in or is this an old hand? Single point I want to yeah. add here more. Yes. If we choose the business then that uh, uh, unlike the availability of the resources will obviously harmful for us. Mainly we need to be sure that whether the uh, raw materials are easily available for us uh, or not for our uh, upcoming uh, business and its sustainability. And another thing is that uh, if we get that uh, materials uh, around us, uh, which may decrease our cost in entrepreneurship or in our production. And another thing is that if we go for the interest of the business, which is beyond our availability of the raw material will also increase our cost, obviously, as I told. And third one is that resources is the mainly part which helps us to increase, sustain, and build up our confidence in the business. Yeah, that is the thing. Thank you. I, I just wanted to um, ask another quick follow-up question. What do you mean by um, costs increasing if we if we do not have um, the resources? If we, need to, if we need to buy or bring a raw material from the distance, obviously it costs a lot uh, rather than it, uh, it uh, is close to us. In case of that, I say, yes, uh, it, cream, it increases our cost in investment. Yes, I see. Okay, thank you. Very good point. Please, yeah. Tuan, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry, we cannot hear you. Please, Tuan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think um, 
uh, talk about the nature resources, uh, very important uh, uh, that uh, farmers need to consider uh, because, the, uh, you know, uh, currently here, farmers cultivate unsustainable, unsustainably and use uh, a lot of chemical and also uh, make um, core resources degradation and um, have to invest more and more input for their farming system, uh, which increase uh, increasing production cost and also reduce their uh, quality uh, products. Uh, and uh, in the context of climate change, this, uh, this, um, this thing become even more serious for farmer. So, um, uh, later resources, um, man management. Uh, uh, if farmer can do, um, can can handle natural resources management good, they can um, uh, improve their capacity, um, complete com complete in their in the markets, and also reduce uh, the the cost um, um, the cost mm -hmm. for their products, uh, and they also connect better. Uh, in the uh, in the economy uh, in the in the market, yeah, I think. Uh, Thank you. I ju lesson. just quick follow up question: What do you mean? How do you mean uh, they may reduce the cost of their product or the price of their product? Uh, if they uh, if they uh, control good natural resources, they can reduce uh, the fee for input for input. Yeah, yeah. For example, if they can diversity for their like many layer crop, they can reduce uh, uh, palm uh, invest uh, palm um, palm machine, or they uh, can reduce the uh, um, the the fertility for their for their system. Yes, I see. Yes, I think that's a very interesting point. Also, what you raised around. Um, the quality of your product and um, and how uh, taking taking into account the natural resource base um, and the the types of inputs that you need um, are also going to uh, not only um, influence the cost of your production but also the quality of your product and your 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 reputation. Um, so that's very interesting. Okay. Um, Unless there is another, yes, please, Wahangi. I would like to add something. In fact, the impact of the activity on the environment, that means you need to take into account uh, the natural resources that are available in order for you to uh, reduce the impact of the activity on the environment, uh, that is the carbon footprint, means we would like to, we would need to manage our um, business in a more general sense that means you need to you know look at the activities or the business activities that you're handling thank you okay thank you Rangi. yes i i'm not sure i understood the last point exactly about the different activities if you could um perhaps explain that a little bit more I want. I meant that the business or the enterprise should consider the environment in terms of its production. That means its activities must have a positive impact on the environment. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Um, I, I guess. Um, uh, to to consider to consider the environmental impact for all of your different activities. Um, okay, um, I now would like to touch on the last point, um, which is technological sustainability. Would anyone like to have a guess 
um, what, what is meant by that? Why is it important to consider technological aspects in order to, to be sustainable in your enterprise? Yeah, um, I think because uh, we are now living in our, in our world where technology is influencing many things, right from uh, uh, the product themselves and uh, even the way we market the products. And uh, maybe I'll talk about two things. If you look at, uh, for example, farm and forest products, in, in some cases, you will need technology to value add uh, these products. And also the other thing is also need technology to, to market them, especially if you are using, a, if you are doing a digital marketing, for example. And so, uh, yeah, so it also influence uh, your outreach uh, as well as uh, your accessibility of the, of the product in the market. And um, why is it then, or what is it that uh, an entrepreneur should ensure then in terms of these different technologies that are available um, to render their enterprise sustainable? Um, I think one is uh, an entrepreneur needs to, to, to stay abreast of, uh, you know, to, to keep an eye on what is happening in the, what is happening in the technological space and, and how that will influence their products. So uh, to me, it's a matter of uh, being aware of what is happening with regards to, 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 to technology. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jeffrey. I think that was that was a very good point. Um, I also like the um, the idea that technology can really influence or can have an impact, can be useful in many air, different areas of your enterprise activities. Um, so in production and value adding, but also in the marketing, and that entrepreneurs should stay aware of any new technologies that might become available. Um, Tang Yu, I've, I've seen your hand up. Yes, thank you, Kata. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, from uh, my point of view, the technology is uh, very important for the FFPOs in uh, their production and business. Uh, we can uh, help you and they can apply in own, in how the production and business process. I mean, from input to uh, forest and farm uh, caring, harvesting and uh, marketing to, uh, the, uh, to the market. And uh, through working with the FFPOs in Vietnam, we, uh, we, we really see that uh, uh, the technology uh, really uh, help uh, FFPOs to uh, add uh, value for their production and business. And uh, with uh, the capacity uh, FFPOs, I mean, uh, if they have a good capacity, uh, the technology is uh, really bring uh, benefits, not only for FFPOs, but also their member. And uh, here, technology, uh, we are, uh, I am, um, uh, referring uh, the equipment, and we have uh, a lesson learned that uh, one of uh, our uh, FFPO in uh, Vietnam, when they uh, invest uh, equipment, uh, machine, machinery uh, for the plywood uh, processing, you know, at first uh, they bought a very old machine because they, uh, they lack of uh, capital for their investment. But, uh, you know, what the issue is that after that, they had to spend a lot of uh, cost for repairing the machine. So that's a very good lesson learned. Uh, after that, uh, we, we can uh, understand where the CPO is and uh, advice uh, for, for better advice to the FFPOs in uh, technology. Thank you. Thank you, Tang. That's a very interesting example and a good point that um, uh, you need to sort of be aware of any pitfalls that come with investing in certain in certain technology rather than other um, in this case and an older type of machinery that will then require 
more inputs from you to repair and 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 keep keep working. Uh, Nila, did you want to say something to add to that? Yes, Katha. Actually, obviously, it creates a techno space for production, and uh, it is the easy space or easy way to inform the people about your products, and. And it takes the less, less time. It means it helps to preserve your time to inform about your products to the people. And uh, it helps us for value adding facts as well as aware the similar kinds of product, uh, what is happening in the market. And uh, it is the easy way to marketing, obviously. Yes, it is. And uh, easy for selling as well as uh, um, buying the raw material and to show the real processing. Uh, processing uh, uh, to grab the con consumer's uh, interest towards your product. And uh, it helps to be aware about the upcoming mishaps uh, uh, to save your uh, products and your business. Uh, uh, I guess the, these might be the good way or this, it helps us, uh, that technology helps us to sustain our entrepreneur. Thank you, Nina. Yes, many benefits of, of uh, yeah. using technology, many, many potential benefits. Bohangi, um, please go ahead. This is the last point because then I would like to move ahead in, the, in our agenda, please. Bohangi, did you want to? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. I would also like to add the fact that uh, technology allows uh, the enterprise to uh, create uh, more competitive projects or uh, products. And also this one allows us uh, to uh, produce a uh, good quality products that can contribute to the improvement of uh, human health, as well as uh, animal health, environmental health and all that. And therefore this contributes a lot to the improvement uh, of our general production. So that is what I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wang. Yes, indeed, many benefits again. Um, there was just one point that I wanted to still um, reiterate, and that is the sustainability aspect of the, the technological um, area. And that is that um, while there are many benefits to different types of technology, um, you also need to make sure that you as an entrepreneur are able to, to acquire it, to use it, to maintain it, because if you're not, then you're, you're not sustainable in the technological aspect. You will, your, your enterprise is not sustainable. So um, I think there is an important point to make here about the equipment and, and, and technical processes being appropriate to the enterprise and to the capacities of the entrepreneurs. Um, and they, they sort of, they cater to their needs, but they also suit the users and the local conditions in which they will operate in. Um, yes, so that was just one last point I wanted to make on that. I was wondering whether Isabel and Jacques would like to have a, um, whether we missed any important points when talking about these five areas of sustainability. Um, no, most of the point has been mentioned and, and clearly, but there is just a, a, a take a, a bit of distance from, from the details, is that uh, why we use MEND and not other enterprise development approach is especially for two uh, aspects, area, which are not considered usually by the other enterprise development approaches, which is the uh, natural resource management and environment and the social and cultural aspects. Let's say that you, you don't need a MND if you want a efficient enterprise who makes money, and as a good technology, uh, but you, you will need MEND if you want also to have a positive impact on social aspect and a positive impact in terms of environment. And you mentioned the details behind, that, behind this, 
but it's it's really I emphasize this a lot because uh, I have seen recently, even in Nepal, <laughs> uh, that uh, you can have a very efficient enterprise, making a lot of money, uh, giving work to some people, um, and using, but using natural resources from elsewhere. <laughs> that means the the uh, environmental impact of the on the enterprise. Uh, is not a plus for regional development. So all this enter into, into consideration. And this is specific to MAND. That's what I wanted to say. Otherwise, all, all, all what has been said, I think, it, uh, shows that, I mean, everything is, is integrated, is in, in, in understood. Thank you so much, Isabel. Yes, that's a very good point to highlight that um, the social, cultural, and environmental aspects are a particular are a particularity of MAND, important ones, um, which would seem to, to make sense also. Um, perhaps now I, I'm gonna continue in my in my quick summary of yes, please, Jack, please. <laughs> yes, yeah. okay. What I just wanted to add is that. In fact, these five areas, when we do the planning okay, of the enterprise or when we do the study, it's a way to brand all this together. We don't have to take each of the area, okay? Of course, we have to start with that, but after that, we have to mix all this area and to see what is the best. Am I clear? Okay. So, and the second thing I wanted to add is that these five areas has to be also used when we run the enterprise later in phase four or six or whatever. That means in the long run, you have to come back on a regular basis and to see if these five areas okay, are okay or not. Or do I miss when I'm running my enterprise one issue that is not, for example, natural management or economy or social or whatever, to be sure that when running the enterprise, we don't forget one, okay? And we don't have to money for an only. That's just what I wanted to, uh, to add. Thank you, Jacques. Yes, and we will talk about the, the MAND process and um, how throughout the entire process, um, the entrepreneurs will consider all of these five areas. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay, so um, we're still talking about the core principles of, um, of MAND. And I would now like to, we've talked about the different, the five areas of enterprise development. Um, and now I would like to talk about another particularity or another, princi another principle of MAND, and that is um, the, the forming of strategic alliances. So MAND emphasizes the importance of, of creating these strategic alliances between entrepreneurs and service providers and of developing market linkages. So along the value chain, and there is a sort of very uh, rough schematic of one, um, there are two types of actors. We have direct actors who are all the people in the market chain through which the products move. So harvesters, traders, manufacturers, consumers, you, says, you can see them here in the middle. And then you have indirect actors um, who are the people or organizations that influence different aspects of um, product marketing. So they could be policy makers or technical researchers or environmental advocacy groups. Um, but uh, support to tree and forest based enterprises cannot be delivered by a single service provider. Isabel, did you want to say something? I can see your hand up. No, sorry, Jacques, I can see your hand up. <laughs> No, I don't think. No, okay, okay, sorry. Um, so support to tree and forest-based enterprises cannot be delivered by a single service provider um, since various types of expertise will be needed. Um, some related to production or forest management, some to marketing, enterprise management, some associated with technology or policy issues. And the facilitators in MAND in the MAND process can help entrepreneurs identify strategic partners that can sustainably contribute to the development of the enterprise. So then um, I wanted to touch upon a very important 
um, concept, which is the difference between selling and marketing. Um, so, and MEND really encourages the second. Um, so selling is about um, focusing on selling more products, irrespective of what the customer wants, and selling really what you can make. Um, so it's sort of product oriented. Um, it looks for new opportunities to sell products. So it's volume oriented. The more you sell, the better. Um, and uh, it's customer service is sort of secondary. And there is quite limited planning and feedback in the whole process. Marketing, as opposed to that, focuses on what you can sell. So this is where you adjust your enterprise to, to, to the market, to the customer, um, and orient it towards profit rather than um, quantities. Um, so profit-oriented, and you try to make what you can sell. Um, so there is uh, a focus on uh, value adding and packaging, on customer service, and there is extensive planning and feedback in the whole process. And um, we have already talked about um, the process itself, and Jack has touched upon this, and you are, I'm sure, all familiar with this filter diagram, as we call it, which is... Um, and I'm sorry, I've only put this up in, in English, but I hope our French colleagues are familiar with it. Um, uh, so it, this is really just a, um, a demonstration of, uh, of, of in an ideal situation, how the MAND process works. And it's, it's really important. The filter aspect is really important. So phase one begins with the potential entrepreneurs assessing their current situation, what are their capacities? What are their available local resources? What are their main con constraints in the market system in each of the five areas of enterprise development? And then shortlisting um, resources and products that merit further research in the next phase. Um, so in phase, th phase two, then, the pre-selected products, you already have you know, a, a little bit of a filter, so you only have a few products, le less or fewer products going through the filter, the first filter. Uh, so in phase two, the pre-selected products and, and, and resources are systematically examined again from all perspectives relating to the five areas of enterprise development. And this is done by the entrepreneurs collecting data for each area which then eventually allows them to select the most promising product and the most appropriate form of enterprise. Phase three is then all about analyzing the data collected in phase two in order to refine the enterprise idea and to develop the enterprise development plan. And this is also the phase in which the entrepreneurs identify their training and assistance needs based on the enterprise strategy they have chosen. And in phase four, quite at the bottom, but really important, um, is where all the planning and strategizing then turns real and entrepreneurs start piloting their enterprises and receive any necessary further training and financial support. And the role of the facilitator is really important here in accompanying the entrepreneurs in this space. This is crucial. And we'll hear more about this um, when we discuss phase four activities on our last training day. Um, so then I wanted to talk a little bit about the role of the facilitator. And I've already touched, um, touched on this before, but um, MAND really stresses the responsibility of the potential entrepreneurs in the whole development of their enterprise. So it places really clear boundaries around the facilitator's role. Um, the facilitator's support is needed throughout the process, but it is critical that the entrepreneurs acquire the skills to make their own decisions and to formulate their own enterprise plans. Um, so the entrepreneurs really must participate in each phase of the process for a successful enterprise development. And then I wanted to talk about um, the role of the business development specialist sitting in a business incubation unit in forest and farm producer organizations. So um, as I've mentioned, we have invited participants from the second and third tier um, 
producer organizations. And you can see here a schematic of um, sort of local tier and then the second, third and national tier. And uh, in FFF, we believe that within the second and third tier, it could be very, very useful if, um, uh, if there was a designated business incubation unit, um, as I've mentioned before, that could support um, M, A, and D processes. And the role that um, these units or the staff in these units would take um, uh, would be in coordinating M, A, and D activities in very important role in helping data gathering, um, ensuring that the environment is conducive to M, A, and D implementation. Um, they would also then ensure that the necessary resources for M, A, and D implementation are available. Um, they should provide the facilitators with the necessary information, support them in organizing their training sessions, and also help in designing support strategies for the startup phase, for the starting enterprises, create links with service providers, but also um, evaluate the facilitators' work and the EDPs, the enterprise development plans that are produced um, through these trainings. Okay, um, I think we're a little bit behind our schedule <laughs> as was expected, um, but I just wanted to, um, no, actually let's move on. Um, so we finished talking about um, the, the core principles of MAND, and now I would like to start talking about um, the, the, the whole uh, the preliminary phase of the MAND process. And you can see here on the slide, a schematic of the whole process. Um, and uh, we know that there are four phases, but in reality, before you can start implementing the first phase, there is a raft of preliminary activities that need to be completed, both by the FFPO business incubation staff, as well as by the field facilitators to encourage support from key stakeholders and to check all the supporting elements and services needed by entrepreneurs are available, but also to collect information, uh, which will be very um, important through, throughout the entire MAND process. Uh, so here, I just wanted to, um, oops, okay. <laughs> so before I go ahead, um, I was wondering, um, I'm going to stop sharing now because I wanted to ask you um, what were the key activities that you in your own context uh, implemented before MA and D process was started? Um, I would just like to sort of hear um, if you can remember, um, how did you go about preparing for MA and D? What were the what were the, the the activities that you've that you implemented? Yes, Twan. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Tata. Uh, I think uh, before before Vietnam FFF team conduct uh, M A N D, um, uh, um, Vietnam Farmer Union. Um, um, um choose the, the key uh, the key um the key partners very well they 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 know very uh, very well the the methods the approach the approach uh, uh, uh how how they can um, choose the right person to training for farmer to transform uh, what's the miss isabel uh trainer for first to farmer so I think the most important thing is that they can collect many partners in different um, different organizations that can um, in, uh, can can support for each other to uh, to um, uh, to uh, to have a, um, a same uh, same same view same view same mindset. And after that, we uh, we um, we can um, we we. Um, we discuss discuss with open mindset, so we can um, can 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 uh, can apply what we learn uh, for for our situation uh, in Vietnam. Yeah, I think uh, that's all. Thank you, Tuan. 
so you've um you you sort of assessed the different types of organizations that could support the entrepreneurs in their activities is that do I understand correctly okay would anyone else um be willing to who could uh, who could tell us what what activities they have? Please, Grace. From my organization, uh, under the preliminary phase, what was done was first to choose the farmer group to work with. But again, because as they were going to work with the FF, they tried to brainstorm what interventions can fit under FFF program so that they have they had that in mind. So try to choose the farmer group to work with, but also about the intervention and also to try to select some staff who can be who attended the MAD training, the first one so that when they come back, they can facilitate those and stay. So that's the, the, the thing that was done before the money training. Okay, thank you. So you've, um, you've selected your, your, your groups and you've, uh, you've, you've made sure that you had staff trained up to, uh, or people trained up to, to facilitate the process. Um, I would like to touch on on the first point you made in in phase one when talk about phase one and the selection of participants. Um, I just would like to continue collecting a few more points. Tan, please. Yes, Kata. Yeah, from uh, Vietnam, you have a team in Vietnam. Uh, the first thing because uh, before we uh, conduct uh, MEND training is uh, was that uh, very important is uh, to to make the document of the MAND uh, I mean Vietnamese uh, side the documentation to be like uh, acquainted with uh, the trainee because uh, most of our trainees are, are farmer and you, as we all uh, understand that uh, MAND uh, uh, consolidate uh, many kind of uh, skills and uh, knowledge like uh, collect information, um, uh, value chains, or cost uh, accounting, etc. So it's very important to to uh, make the documentation to suitable and as uh, simple as possible with uh, our training as uh, RFPOs. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. So you you have translated and adapted the MAND material to the local context in which it was then used. Very important point. Yes. Thank you, Tang. Anyone else would like to tell us what they did before they implemented MAND? <coughs> Jacques, did you want to say something? Yeah. Speaking to me. Yes, <laughs> your mic is open. I was just wondering whether you wanted to say something. I thought you were speaking about uh, asking to the people. Yes, about yes. No, I just heard. <laughs> anyway, yes. Okay. So, anyone, any of the any of the participants would like to tell us what they did before they implemented MAND. What about? Um, information that might have been useful perhaps in the process did, did any of you collect any data or information in this phase may i cut that yes please Yvonne. yes i think it's very important also for, from the Juan and Tang, uh, in uh, sharing i would like to add before we uh, um, Start the MAD MA training. We also make the some uh, 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 training needs assessment. We understand uh, about our FAPO and uh, FAPO uh, they develop in uh, every level. Some FAPO advanced uh, already, but some 
a baby of very starting in the start uh, uh, step. This is why we also have to understand our uh, train, trainees and uh, the situation of them and the, uh, what they uh, have the, some potential from their area also. We call this um, uh, training uh, assessment need. Yes. Training need assessment also. Okay. And so, yeah. um, um, what were the what what were the sort of the results of that? What um, what did you find? We uh, found we have some criteria for select for selecting our FPO because the, we organize uh, one training we do uh, we cannot uh, cover for all. This is why we choose the the, uh, the some participant. For example, one class we have about 24, 26. And uh, in our uh, area project, we consider uh, about diversity, diversification of participants from the FAPO, from the facility, uh, local facilitator. And sometimes we also invite some uh, local people who can involve in our training and we know their needs. And based on that, uh, we will focus in some very specific need of our participant also. Yes. Okay, so you've used this this pre-assessment to identify really the your target group for NAMD. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because the participant have some area, some people they work on the wood uh production some people they work on the uh, uh non timber production this is why we have to identify their need also okay thank you Yvonne. thank you um wahangi please yes i like to say also that uh Apart from uh, choosing uh, actors, so uh, what we did uh, it was uh, to help facilitate the process that will help us uh, to improve uh, livelihood of uh, these farmers. So that was uh, one of the most important issue before uh, we launch. Uh, ADM, we wanted that uh, they to tell them that uh, the tool it was very important so that uh, it will help them to change uh, the uh, life, livelihood. Well, no. Thank you. So you've that is it. If, if I understand correctly, you you've done you've done some awareness raising in your target communities um, around what benefits M A and D could provide them with. Um, supposedly then enabling them to take the decision themselves and whether they wanted to participate or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, please turn, yes. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, one thing that I also very impressed uh, with the careful work of Vietnam Farmer Union. Uh, as the, the first step, we are, we are fine about the situation. Sorry. Uh, I think there was some background noise there. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, I'm also very impressed with the way that the Vietnam Farmer Union uh, conducts in the field. Uh, first of all, um, uh, they find out about the local situation by field surveys. But before the field survey, the Vietnam Farmer Union, Union Accenture never also selected the size uh, at uh, X province, even at X district, according to um, certain criteria like uh, Miss Ivan said um, before, you know the Vietnam Farmer Union has a system that goes all the way to the grassroots level. So, uh, um, so they um, choose uh, the uh, the the, um, uh, the province or to district. Uh, uh, suitable with the criteria of the program. 
um, and before we conduct the field surveys. So I think the field survey is very important before we uh, follow the um, MND process. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Tuan. Okay, um, I was, we are running a little bit behind schedule, so I would really like to, um, oops, what have I done? Um, I would really like to sort of, I think that these were all really, really good points, and I just wanted to summarize what, what we thought or I thought um, were different um, responsibilities of the FFPO business uh, incubation unit or um, your particular units and which you have supported MA, from which you have supported MAND, but also important um, activities that the field facilitators need to undertake um, before MAND is implemented. So let me start sharing my screen again. Okay. So um, I think what is really important is that you define realistic objectives as with any um, new activity. Um, so they so that MAND can be um, can be applied in a in a suitable context, um, but also to understand what benefits you might be able to provide for for your participants. So you really need to also for this assess the estimated uh, estimate the resources that will be required in terms of time, human and financial resources, and the necessary training of the field facilitators. Um, so realistic objectives also adjusted to your your own capacities um, to pro to provide this kind of support. Um, then uh, I think what is also really important is to assess the level from the different levels of um, administration and political authorities, because um, you might find that if there is a national priority for a certain product um, or enterprises based on certain products, entrepreneurs might find that they can benefit from support during the startup phase of their enterprise and also later. Um, so this could be simplified access to financial institutions or uh, government funding programs, tax exemptions, easier registration formalities. So try to understand what is the level of support from administration and um, political authorities. And then a very important point is also to survey the region in which you're going to implement MAND and uh, um, I think Ivan touched on this point, and to establish contacts with the relevant organizations and institutions that operate in the same area. Um, and the, the survey of the region or, or of the, the, the environment that the entrepreneurs are going to be operating in is also really important to, um, to compile a brief overview of the opportunities and the constraints for enterprise development in this area, and to gain a broad uh, understanding of the potential resources and products. And this will be important information that you will then be able to feed your facilitators who will work with this information when they work with the, the entrepreneurs. Um, then you need to define your financial strategy to support initial capital needs. And there are different options, of course, for financing the capital needs of enterprises. They could be um, the creation of saving and credit groups or existing village funds, uh, microfinance institutions or traditional banks. And of course, you all know MAND encourages entrepreneurs to use their own funds as much as possible and to establish links themselves to um, financial service providers. Um, so whatever the option that you are going to go for, or entrepreneurs are going to go for, the different financial strategies should be discussed before MAND is, um, is implemented. And then you've also talked about this, um, you'll need to select suitable field facilitators, um, and this is a critical success factor. Um, it's, it may be a really useful strategy to select highly motivated, enterprise-minded individuals from the communities themselves, um, because they will know the context, the natural resources, the local partners and actors, they will speak the local language, 
Um, so there are a number of selection criteria that you could look into um, in, in, the, in the field facilitator guidelines around um, uh, yeah, the different qualities that facilitators should have in order to, to be useful um, in um, training for MA and D. Um, and then you need to um, provide, of course, your facilitators with the necessary information. So at the very least, they should have information about the market demand and legal institutional issues related to enterprise establishment. They should understand the difference between the enterprise development approach or uh, the MAND enterprise development approach versus the traditional project approach. And they should be aware of possible financial approaches. So then I um, also wanted to talk to you about the, the to-do list for the field facilitators before MAND is, is, is implemented. Um, so they need to have a very clear understanding of the MAND process, principle, methods, and tools. So they need to be trained. Um, facilitators um, also um, need to examine whether the current conditions in their locality will be suitable for MAND implementation. So they will need to make sure that the minimal requirements are met, meaning that there is support from the provincial, district, local administration. There are sufficient resources for all the tasks required. So this means time, human and natural resources. Um, they need to also be aware of the market demand and the situation of um, different concerned resources and product subsectors. And um, they need to be aware of the financial strategy for the project or for the for the MND implementation. Um, then they also need to, of course, ensure that they have an understanding of the local context. Um, so you will need to have, as a facilitator, you will need to have an understanding of the market demand at national and international levels for products with existing trade routes. Uh, you need to be aware of the key stakeholders and service delivery organizations, um, as well as the national legal context, and um, aware of opportunities and constraints for enterprise development locally. Then uh, they should really introduce um, the MAND activities to key stakeholders in their localities to make sure that they know about the planned activities and there is support for that. Um, they need to prepare the field work tools. Sorry, they need to prepare the field work. So they need to um, uh, prepare all the tools that will be necessary for the field work, translate the relevant MAND tools, um, list the existing resources and products in the region, um, a list of possible sources for capital, uh, the list of the main rules and regulations, and a list of the possible legal statuses relevant to small rural entrepreneurs. And then finally, they need to prepare a work plan for themselves. Okay, so we've raced through this now because um, we have about half an hour left and I wanted to talk to you about, wanted to talk with you rather, about phase one uh, of the MAND process. So this is just a reminder of where we are. And now I would like to talk with you about what you think would be the objectives or are the objectives of the, the first phase of MAND. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that we can have a discussion. Who would like to go first? What, what do you remember are the objectives of, of phase one? Please, Geoffrey, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Um... I, th I think uh, the first thing in phase one is to uh, to, to get to know the the, the, the contest, the, the situation you are operating in. Um, so it is it's, it's kind of uh, doing do, doing an, an analysis of the situation and uh, and, and, and also uh, looking around. Uh, so from uh, an entrepreneurial perspective, uh, this will be like um, 
um, looking at the potential, if it's about the market, uh, looking at the data, trying to analyze the data that is available uh, about the about the enterprise, and also uh, generally looking at the the, the situation, the uh, the situation that you are operating in uh, with regards to the enterprise. Yes, thank you, Geoffrey. Very good point. So um, you need to sort of have a first look around, as you said, um, in your area and see what, what um, resources and products are available. Um, what is the potential? Um, please, Wahangi. Yes, uh, uh, apart from these uh, preliminary data, you need to uh, define the uh, expected objective within your enter enter enterprise. So you have to know how to answer the need so that uh, you can uh, improve uh, the livelihood of uh, these farmers. For that, you need to define uh, the size of the enterprise that you want to create, what are the, uh, the products uh, that you want to create and, and what is uh, the value, the, chain, the, the value that uh, you are targeting. So this is a very important step before you go to the MED. Yes, thank, thank you, you Wang. A very good point indeed. And, um, uh, this is the this is the moment where the entrepreneur should really under, uh, express and understand their expectations um, around what this enterprise is going to bring to their to their livelihoods. Um, the decision about the size of the enterprise will be crucially dependent on that. But this is a decision that will come a bit further down the track, perhaps. Um, but yes, it will be based on this financial expectation, economic expectation that the entrepreneurs should express in this moment. Anyone else? Please, Tuan. Yes, I think uh, as a first uh, first pay, we will uh, we um, our team, our facilitator team, have an overview about the the situation as uh, Mr. Graffin uh, suggests, uh, and uh, and uh, we uh, we have uh, two uh, two uh, two targets. Uh, two uh, targets. And first of all, is uh, identify the um, uh, potential entrepreneurs in the community, help them identify by themselves. They are really potential entrepreneurs. And second is uh, help them to identify the um, the uh, shortlist about the uh, products in in their community, uh, the um, the main product and and diversify uh, diversify um, products in uh, their community. Uh, even now, uh, that's uh, many 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 kind of product. Uh, not really product in 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 this time, but in the future they can become a, a potential product. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think. Yes, very good. Thank you. So, um, so you've uh, uh, you've helped um, entrepreneurs to make that decision on whether they want to be um, or uh, uh, farmers or local producers make that decision on whether they want to be part of the process. Um, and also uh, listing all the potential, all the, the currently available products and resources, but also looking at perhaps um, products that are not yet um, being sold, but could have a, a potential. Okay, um, let me share my screen again. Sorry, this always takes a little bit longer. Um, so just to give an overview, um, this is these are all points that that you've touched upon. So in phase one, the objectives are who are identifying the potential entrepreneurs and understanding what they're helping them understand what their expectations are. Um, 
look at the available resources and products and understand already what are perhaps opportunities and constraints within the value chain and the market system um, for these different uh, long listed products. So here are the different steps. I'm not sure this is, uh, maybe you could tell me if this is visible on your screens, um, but you might be all familiar with the MAND map. Um, I put it in two languages. I'm not sure it's maybe it might be too small, but um, yeah, so these are the different steps and um, outputs of phase one. So um, phase one is where the potential entre entrepreneurs are identified. Sorry, let me go to the pointer. So this is where the potential entrepreneurs are identified. Um, they assess their current uh, situation, their capacities and uh, the available resources and the main constraints in the market system in each of the five, the main constraints in each five areas, in all of the five areas of enterprise development. And then based on these assessments, they shortlist the resources and the products that merit further research in the next phase. And they also recognize the benefits of working together. Okay, um, let me see whether we have time for a quick conversation. Um, it would be really good if I could find my mouse, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, uh, yes, so I think we might have just a minute and I'm gonna stop sharing again because I wanted to ask you um, about how you implemented um, phase one activities, whether you could perhaps retell us one of you in two, three minutes on the different steps that you went through um, in, uh, in implementing this, um, this phase with your potential entrepreneurs and their groups. If you could just tell us how how did you what happened? Tell us the story. Yes, now we okay. can hear you. Please go ahead. All right. Okay. So for for Zambia, we have one of the groups that uh, did M A N D. Um, so what happened was um, uh, we identify a number of groups that we are dealing in uh, uh, forest products. Others were making ba baskets. Others were doing brooms and different other products. So these people were actually, some of them were doing the businesses individually and some of them were in, in groups, but it wasn't really serious. So these groups were identified and then they were brought together. And then uh, through the training, they identified different types of businesses and which businesses would be beneficial and which ones have got enough resources within the community that they can. Uh, they can adopt. Uh, so they had a number of uh, uh, businesses they had uh, listed out and then they did the survey on the market and the resources around and um, they came up with one uh, business which was uh, in basket making, um, which uh, most, uh, most of the uh, people in the groups uh, voted for. And uh, after that, they, uh, since they were not really working as a group, they later on uh, uh, formed one group uh, to be able to work, uh, uh, you know, to do the business together. And they managed to put monies together to buy the resources they needed to make the baskets. And up to now, uh, they've really uh, moved well in their business. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is Fustina your name or because there is now a different name on the Fustina, yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm using all these, Yes, uh, I understand. Uh, okay. Thank you so yes. much. So from what it sounded like, you've actually described the whole MAND phase, uh, the, the whole yeah. MAND process, um, um, all, all the way to where there was a final product decided upon and a group formed and they acquired their finances um, and I was just wanting to put a little bit of a, a magnifying glass on, on the first phase of, of 
um, the different activities that you conducted in there. And I've showed you the slide with the different steps. Um, so I was just wondering how you went about um, um, putting together a list of the different potential products and resources um, or how the, the entrepreneurs went about doing that, whether you can recall, I don't know. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So initially, um, in Choma, we have a number of uh, entrepreneurs that we are doing businesses individually. So the initial, uh, uh, initially, what was done was to identify these uh, groups of people uh, to be brought together, and that should have been done through radio programs. Um, where these people who are dealing in these uh, forest product businesses, we are able to be brought together from uh, uh, one community, but they were all uh, doing uh, businesses based on forest products. So the initial phase was to identify uh, these people that are doing similar kind of businesses. And uh, after they, they, they were identified and they were able to be brought together, they identified the, the, the type of uh, businesses they're doing and the local resources they have within the, the community that was able to help in feeding into uh, the, the business. So I think that was actually the initial, initial uh, phase identifying the people that are dealing in the deep, um, similar um, uh, business and also identify the, the local resources they have within the community that is helping them in feeding into the business. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Christina. I was wondering whether Isabel and Jacques had some questions or comments perhaps. Um, yes, um, maybe some, some comments. Huh? Uh, out of, sorry, out out of experience, um, I, I would say that many many projects uh, uh, used to do this one very quickly, or in some cases, at least jumping directly to 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 phase two. Um, so for me and for, for, for people who use MND, I think uh, going through phase one is quite important. Um, especially uh, choosing at the beginning, uh, identifying the right target group of potential entrepreneurs, I think it's a key for success. Because uh, if we miss that point, and if the entrepreneurs themselves uh, or potential entrepreneur don't feel like they will become entrepreneur or don't feel the, the, the need to become entrepreneur, then the whole process will uh, be affected by that. So the, 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 that, that's the main value of, of phase one is to actually build on the confidence of the potential entrepreneur to slowly, slowly become entrepreneur. So, so that's why I am I'm a bit defending <laughs> the, 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 the fact to do, uh, to, to spend a little bit time in phase one. And otherwise what you describe is the, the usual way. I mean, at the beginning, of course, it's a project or the project staff facilitator who, who starts the process. In step one, identifying the, the potential entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs are not yet there. But from the second uh, step, when they are, uh, identi identified themselves as potential entrepreneurs, then they start to be active in the process. They start to think about, okay, what are the qualities to become an entrepreneurs? Do I have these qualities? Do I have the means to do so? And what is there around me that I could uh, use the, the, the products, the resources, etc. So what you described already. So what I want to, to, to say is the initial identification of potential entrepreneurs is key for the project. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Perhaps, uh, I mean, you might be already uh, working with, with groups who are very entrepreneur minded or who are already running an enterprise and who would who would like further support, or you might have within your FFPO um, a target group that you would like to, to focus your, your attentions on. Um, but yes, it's a very important point that Isabel made that in, in order to empower people to really participate and, and, and essentially run the whole process, they, they need to want this and they need to, they need to also have the capacities. Not everyone can become an entrepreneur. Um, um, yes. Is there anyone else who would like to perhaps make a comment on uh, Fustina's experience or perhaps from their own perspective on something else that we haven't talked about yet on phase one, any activities or per perhaps issues that they've run into in this first phase? Maybe I can share experience. Please, Grace, yes. From, yeah, can you I can share experience from our site in phase one what was done, yes, it was identification of a pharma group, but uh, it was a bit of discussion, whatever, to introduce to them to try to think about the forest-based business, what can be done there. Ideal, they, they had two ideas. One was about charcoal making and also beekeeping. But when they try to analyze based on those five areas, the first, the, the first business they selected the charcoal making, when they come on the issue of natural resources, it was a barrier because they placed, at that place there is no big forest for them to harvest the trees for charcoal making while planting. So, so when they analyzed it, it was not suitable or that project could not be sustainable because they could harvest and the forest diminished mm -hmm. a few times before other trees get matured to be harvested. It's done when they opted for beekeeping. It is a new intervention, but it's well acceptable in the community. Yeah, after doing all those parameters, then this way we come with the beekeeping enterprise. Maybe that's what I can share. Thank you, Grace. And how did they, how did your entrepreneur groups identify these two initial um, enterprise ideas? Yes. Yeah, the, it was the, what, what from us as organization introduced them the idea that they have to think on the business related to forestry, the forestry business based. So what can be done mm, in relation to forest? So that's why we, they come with the two ideas, charcoal making as the first one, and the beekeeping as the second one. But when they analyzed it, each of them, they opted for beekeeping because it has, the, 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 the environment is supported better than charcoal making. So did I understand correctly that um, you as the FFPO have given this, this boundary around what type of enterprise, um, what sort of product um, the entrepreneurs should, should focus on by saying this should be forest-based? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they told them. It should be forest-based. Mm -hmm. So if something related to forestry with the aim of leading to forest conservation or something climate resilience. So that was the message that was brought to the group that they needed to think something that can be related to issue of forest base, if it can be tree planting. But for them, they say, no, we have a lot of trees here. And of course the areas full of pines and eucalyptus, so it was, not interest for them, they make it, cannot make a profit for them. So they try to think the forest based the business that can make it profit on their side. And um, um, do you know whether the, the, the unit that supported um, the facilitator and the entrepreneur groups um, were able to provide some 
um, some background information on the prospects of these different products. Um, and I mean, we're not even talking about products yet because beekeeping can produce, of course, different products, um, but these different um, value chains um, in general. Well, I was just wondering how much information the entrepreneurs, the potential entrepreneurs were had to work with and um, whether they also then generated some more data and information around the different value chains that they had thought about. Mm, I think they got the preliminary one because it was after um, this muddy training that when staff from Mayawa went there to facilitate them. Yeah, I can't tell how much they had because it's just a briefing that I got when I joined the organization. That's how they did it. Okay. But the main issue for them to take the beekeeping project is based on the sustainability of the project compared to charcoal making. Okay, I understand. So they, they already understood and made some initial assessments and understood that from the natural resource um, area of enterprise development, from that aspect, no enterprise could be sustainable because there were not mm -hmm. enough resources. Okay. Um, I was wondering whether our two star trainers, <laughs> Isabel and Jack, had any comments, perhaps. <laughs> Please, Jack. Okay. Um, for me, this phase one is quite tricky. It's tricky because uh, we are asking to villagers to make a list of what almost exists in their place. And at the same time, to take a decision which has the best product. But to take a decision about the best product, they have to have information about, okay, market information, technology information, and all this. And that they don't have really, actually. So they end up most of they end up and not say most of the time they end up sometime with a decision of or selection an enterprise or product that may not be the best for them because they are more or less driven by we can say information they got from there and there and there and maybe maybe from the radio or from uh, someone who is pushing something, some ID. Let's say we end up, I'm sorry to come back to the honey story, <clears throat> but if you, we have been working in different places in the world and we saw that uh, honey is selected very often. But when we went in details with the villager, we saw that the idea of selecting honey was pushed by government or was pushed by somebody else. Okay, so people were going to take honey. And it's something that we people heard about it. I don't know if I am clear or not. But what I wanted to say to the facilitators is that they have a huge influence or they have a huge, uh, okay, the importance in the selection of this first product because they should have together before okay, the selection, they should have enough information to explain to the villagers or to explain to the uh, future entrepreneurs what are the risks or what are the good points for each of the product. Is it clear or not? Yes? Okay. Really it is. I cannot see many people with their cameras on, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, um, Nela, yes. Did you want to say something? Actually, I support the ideas what Isabel told us. Obviously, yes, it happens in my case as well. We selected the would be entrepreneurs on the base of a community forest users group who are uh, the part of a district faculty team. And we asked them, we sent later them and saying all of the things and they took part in MAND training. Uh, some of the participants were already the part of uh, entrepreneurship uh, from the facilitation of local government or uh, 
uh, anything else. But uh, the very problem at the end, what I found that actually um, they were not confident enough and they were not very clear enough uh, to do further work. And they were just doing the work or that a uh, small entrepreneur, entrepreneurship uh, only for the sake of um, uh, communities, forcefulness or uh, forcing from friends. And uh, uh, these are the things. And the very first thing what I found is the problem to find out the real future entrepreneurs. That's my experience. So I'm totally agree with Isabel here. So that is my point. Thank you, Nela. Yes, um, please, Isabel. Yeah. Um, and this is actually emphasized in the case of uh, having already groups already uh, organized that are said to be uh, uh, to, to, to use MAND. Because sometimes it, it, it comes from individual entrepreneurs who would actually lead others to become entrepreneurs. But if you have already all the forest user group or any or group, not all of the members of the group will have the, the capacity and the willingness to do so. So there is an additional internal problem to solve there before identifying the entrepreneur. And maybe this additional problem uh, uh, need some examination of the legal issue or so institutional issues related to that. Is, it, is there any possibility for some members of a group, uh, uh, formal or informal group, registered or non-registered, to become entrepreneur and what relation he will have with the rest of the group? So this is a very uh, common problem being a cooperative, being a non-formal forest user group, et cetera, we face this question a lot of time. And it is very important to add, 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 identify this problem right at the beginning and slowly, slowly work on it uh, to come up with some internal uh, organization and, and understanding of this point by the, by the member of the group altogether. Yeah, that is a key point. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Nela. Would anyone else like to come into this discussion? Please, Chuck. You are um, you, uh, when, when, yes. when I No, is somebody else? Yes. I'm yes. Ivan. OK, please Can go I? on. Yes, thank you. I would like to add uh, some, uh, some idea on this. I think the first phase of uh, MAND is very, uh, very important because uh, everything we start with very basic knowledge and organization and potential product. Uh, and through the implement MAND in Vietnam after seven years, I think that's a very uh, core issue one thing. This is how facilitator and, and FAPO member can join together and can uh, talk and can share the idea with the facilitating skill is very important because at the beginning, sometimes the facilitator or local people, sometimes they talk a lot. They did not uh, listen to uh, FAPO member. And this is why we cannot, uh, 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 how to say, build up the confidence for our FAPO member. And I think, uh, through the homework or through the exercise, if we have to, to understand about facilitation skills for all participants, like the principle is a very important also. And even in Vietnam, before we uh, train the MAND training, we also train them the facilitation skill because this skill will go through all process of MAND training in training and in implementation in the coming time. That's all, yes. I think I, I, I would like to add that one thing. Facilitation skill very important also for, for training and for MAND training for organization. Like uh, Elizabeth said that the organization, internal issue from uh, organization management is very important also, especially in, in, in incubation 
um, uh, business process make confidence for people and for FFPO. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Jacques, mm -hmm. did you want to add something? Can I do? Yes, OK. Um, when I look at the EDPs that were sent to us, OK, it seems that the selection of projects of the different enterprises were cooked in advance. That means it was already decided or it came to a way that the, the, pro, the enterprise that were selected already existed. And it seems that if this already existed, that means the phase one was not done properly. That's just what I wanted to say. Thank you, Jacques. So I did, I had, I did have some uh, slides prepared to talk about the different steps, but I, I think this discussion is more useful to you who have all implemented MND. We have another four minutes left. Please, Tuan. Yes, many ideas here. And um, I remember one, uh, one uh, small story uh, when we conduct uh, the uh, phase one. Uh, uh, that uh, is, uh, um, when when we uh, we say that uh, FFF program does not give money or does not give machine or sibling, many farmer and even many local officers are very disappointed. Yeah, and, uh, when we say um, uh, that oh FFF help them improve their capacity, and um, many farmer and even local officer reply that farmer has been able to attend training a lot. But after finish the, the training, they still follow old habits. Yeah, follow previous habits. And they do not remember what they have learned. And they don't believe that FFF can help them to become an entrepreneur, um, the true entrepreneur. And the second thing is um, farmers, many farmers are afraid to record information, write down information every day related to their production for calculation or monitoring, uh, not easy for them because that's not mm, habit, their, mm, the, their habit. And uh, it's very difficult to change that habits of farmers, you know. Uh, especially when 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 FFF help um, support for them to conduct um, uh, certificate uh, organic certificates very uh, very trick very um, um, not not easy to 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 follow that um, standard um, um, because uh, they they don't have a habit uh, writing writing or record information. Uh, and they also think they are only small farmers who do not know much. Many people only uh, get um, five grade or six grade, not have a, a college or university certificate. So they um, they 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 uh, they said that how can we become a director like bossy company out there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they don't believe that they can complete with uh, compete with the company with the network of trader who are forcing their pricing every day here. Yes. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And also, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I just I'm just aware of time, and I I promised everyone that we would finish on time. But we will have time tomorrow also when we will have a recap of today in the morning to discuss more, and perhaps um, also address some of your questions and issues you might have faced in phase one. Um, but really interesting to hear about the the lack of confidence. And I I just really briefly wanted to say that. Um, I, I think it, it takes time no, to build up confidence and, and MAND is, is quite a slow process, but at the end, if you follow it, I think this is the great gift that it gives you, this, this confidence that you have an, a good understanding of your situation and you know how to, how to adapt your idea and your, your business to that and how you can and information attain information that will give you also confidence and power in relation to these other big players in 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 the value chain, um, 
So it's 12 o'clock uh, in Rome anyway, where I'm based. Um, we have run out of time for today. I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your fantastic um, participation and and all your inputs and, and stories. And we will continue here tomorrow, uh, same time, same place. Uh, we'll have a brief recap and then talk about phase two. <laughs>